Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool arcade game repair video for you this morning. What do you think? Today we got a missile command. Guy brought this by, he said he bought it about 20 years ago. This one hasn't worked in a while. He said we he heard that we could probably fix it. Doesn't have the side art on it, which kind of sucks. But it's still a missile command. It's been played quite a bit. You can tell all the wear is gone off the all the paint I mean is gone off the control panel. It's got the bigger trackball. No side art. I haven't messed with it yet. I really didn't even ask him what was wrong with it because I know what's wrong with it. And if you watch this channel, you know what's wrong with it too. It's broke. So I start at the wall. You got to start at the wall, people. Somebody's put a nice new end on it. So all that looked good. So I'm going to plug it in here in a minute. But you always kind of want to look at something, you know, after you picked it up and get back home, you kind of just want to make sure everything still looks good. You might get home and the monitor's in the bottom. You'd be surprised. That actually has happened a few times. Not with me because I'm, you know, I'm Joe. But, you know... I've heard of people picking these up and then they find out when they get home that the monitor was just sitting in there. But anyway, I'm going to plug it in and see what happens. Well, I plugged it in and just as I thought, it's broke. It's not doing anything. So, I can know I've got my inner locked open. I've tried my switch both ways. You gotta be careful on these Ataris. There's another interlock switch up there in the front. But somebody's already bypassed that, it looked like. So, now I gotta get out the multimeter and check to see if I'm even getting power into my power block down there to see if my cord's good. Alright, so I'm getting power into the cabinet so my power cord is good. So now I'm going to start checking fuses. This looks like there's two fuses there and three fuses there but that, that one it looks like somebody's probably added in there so they may have replaced one of those there so we'll see what them look like so all the fuses were good so now I'm back to thinking that I've either I've got a bad switch or one of these interlocks is messed up the one on the front I don't really like the looks of so I gotta investigate that a little further Normally this has a little button here that you can pull out and the door and the door should hit it when it shuts. It's kind of a safety feature. But this one it looks like somebody's rigged up so where it's always on. But I'm not getting any power. <clears throat> and my cord's good. My fuses are good. So I'm thinking it's one of these switches or I've got a broken wire somewhere. That I haven't found yet. So I've got to look at that now. So just kind of as I thought, I took that cover off of it, got back down in here. Let's see if I can get you a light. Took that cover off. Look at the back of that switch, it's all falling apart. 
I'm surprised it didn't blow the fuse when it did that. But that's our problem. I gotta I'm probably just gonna jumper those wires for now. And that should do something. We'll see. So I originally thought somebody had just had this set up where it wouldn't ever open or close so that way it doesn't cut off the power so it's basically always got power because that's pretty common people will jumper the wires because they don't want the game to cut off every time they open the coin door but actually that one was still wired up the way it was supposed to but it just pretty much fell apart it disintegrated and the spring popped loose and the whole switch came apart So now I'm getting power over to my monitor, but I'm not getting my 5 volts over to the game board. See the little LED there? But I think I just got a bad connection on this edge connector. So I'm going to clean the connector. And see if that helps. Houston, we found the problem. So I'm going to take that board out and repair that edge connector there with some copper tape. So this is how I do it. We just put copper tape on that one there and soldered here. Basically the five just needs to get from the edge connector through here and over to this line here. The next one was actually still fine. But basically the edge connector gets dirty inside the game and then it starts getting some resistance and after years and years it'll just burn that edge right up. So we put copper tape on them as a repair. And while I got the board out, I'm going to clean these chips. See how blacked and tarnished they are? So I'm going to take all those out of the socket and clean all the legs and put them back in. Alright, I cleaned the edge connector. Cleaned all the ROMs, put that uh, copper tape on it. Now we're going to try it again and see what happens. My LED's on. It sounds like my monitor came on. Let's see. Looks like missile command to me. It's on free play. See how they're flashing? Monitor's not all that great. It is working though. So the next thing I'm going to do is it's got this 4600 monitor in there. And I'm going to take that out and recap it and then adjust it and see if we can get it looking a little bit better. So the 4600 kind of has a bad reputation. People say, oh no, not a 4600. I don't want a 4600. I want a 7000. So they'll take out a 4600 and throw it in the garbage. And then they'll rebuild a uh, 7000 and replace it. And, you know, I used to hate these 4600s also, but, you know, we learned how to work on them. It's a little bit more trouble to get it out of the cabinet is the main deal. And then you've got caps on these two cards. you got caps on the main board. you got caps over here on the power supply. But we figured out most of your problem comes from these connectors. Where those two daughter boards plug in to the main board. If you go through and reflow these connectors and over here on the power supply, 
change all the capacitors and just take your time. They're really just as good as any of the other monitors. Uh, you got to remember this is a very old monitor. I mean the Geo 7 didn't come out to a couple years later and then the 4900 after that and it was you know it was years and years before the 7000 came out. So you just got to remember that when you're working on this stuff. So I'm going to change all the caps, reflow everything, and then we'll get it put back in the game. All right, I got it all back in there. The monitor's working. It was working before, but we capped it and reflowed it just for preventative maintenance. Also fix the guy's light bulb if you ever wanted to know how that worked. It's a light bulb people. He's got a fluorescent tube. You've got your starter over there and your ballast. And Missile Command actually has the speakers up top behind the marquee. You gotta have your marquees working. Adds a lot to the game. Doesn't it look a lot better? Look at that. Can you imagine having that not lit up? Come on now. So anyway, it's pretty much done. So basically I'm going to let it run the rest of the day. And then Ronnie's actually going to come in and do a game playing video of it. So we'll let it run all day, and then he'll play it tonight and make a gameplay video. And if everything's still working okay, we'll call the customer tomorrow, and then they'll come pick it up. So that's how it typically works. And also, we have some t-shirts that we're going to start selling. We were using teespring.com, but it just wasn't working out too good. So we decided we were just going to start carrying t-shirts and selling them and shipping them ourselves. So if you're interested, just shoot us an email and we'll get them shipped out to you. But we only got a handful of them right now. We've got small all the way up to 3X. We've got about 50 of them or so. We just figured we'd see how it goes see how it goes we're gonna get some more designs and stuff too but this is the one we have in right now so Ronnie will be in pretty soon and I'll have him do a gameplay video and check everything out and see how everything's working and thanks for watching we appreciate it and Ronnie will continue the video here soon I have made it in. The missile command's looking good. Look, we got a present in the mail. Someone sent us something. Okay. So we are not soliciting items, but if you do want to send us something or a letter or something, this is our address. We don't need anything though, people. So we don't need you to send us anything unless you just want to as a gift. We do not turn down gifts. Everybody loves gifts. This one is particularly funny. <laughs> I don't know what to think about this. A gift for you. Thanks for all the entertainment, Ron and Joe. I am an Aussie pinball arcade fan with no space to own a machine, but watching your content over the last few years has scratched the itch from Dean. Well, thank you, Dean. We appreciate you watching in Australia. We love our Australian fans. Um, I always remember everything's about 12 hours I guess it depends on what coast you're on, but about 12 hours different from us here. So whenever I'm putting up a video at noon, it's midnight in Australia. And uh, the people are, some of the people are staying up waiting on our video. That's what I'm always thinking about whenever I upload a video. It'll be like coming up to noon and I'm thinking, I got to get this out at noon so all the Australian fans don't have to stay up all night waiting on the video. So look what he sent me. Open circuits. The inner beauty of electronic components. So I guess on the, I guess that's like a mother, a multi-layer board there. 
Let's see what this is here. Let's see what we got. By Eric Schlapfer and Wendell Oskay. Uh -huh. Let's see here. It's from No Starch Press in San Francisco. This is the second printing. Copyrighted 2023. Uh, <laughs> this looks pretty poetic. We cradle our seamless phones in one hands like cool, river-smooth stones. They feel pleasing to touch. One kind of phone might seem better than another, not because of its technological merits, but because of how it looks and feels. This is by design. This is design. Industrial designers, engineers, and artists spend countless hours adjusting every curve, color, and texture. Good design appeals to our physical senses and ultimately to our sense of elegance. I agree. So this is a book of um, like cool things taken apart. So it starts right out with a Timex watch. Boy, it's beautiful. What appear to be scratches on the tips of the tuning fork are actually laser trim marks from a process that fine tunes the frequency. So that's the crystal inside of a watch. And resistors, it's just a cool book. A dip switch. I've broken some of those apart before, accidentally. The camera and a smartphone. A modular telephone cable. And you know, best of all, it's got that cool smell to it. Boy, beautiful book smell. So, I really appreciate this. This is cool. Dean understands that I understand that the details are important. Just a little how things are made, you know. Well, thank you, Dean. We appreciate that. I will look through this, and uh, I'm sure I will enjoy it for a long time to come. So we appreciate you sending us this cool, cool book. Now, folks, if you want to buy this book, you can go get one on Amazon. Now, I don't know the people that... I don't think Dean made this. He's just buying it because he's watched enough videos that he knows I appreciate stuff like that. If you want to get this book or anything like that, and you're going to use Amazon... Use our link down below to Amazon. So, like, you know, you click the link, and I think it's to a pinball... Maybe you don't want to buy a pinball. Maybe you want to look on there for this book. Well, that's fine. Since you clicked our link, it gives us credit that we sent you to Amazon, and it gives us a little tip for doing it. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. I'm going to go see if Dean did that. I'll bet he did because he's a stud. <laughs> he's a rock star. So we, we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. And uh, if you would like to get one of those T-shirts, like Joe was saying, if you uh, just email us. Joe will answer your email. He'll box it up for you. I might save this box so we can send somebody a t-shirt in it. And uh, we're going to ship them out ourselves. Because we've been doing the Teespring thing. But the, the truth is the price is kind of high. And we don't like that they're printed t-shirts instead of silk screened t-shirts. So the ones we have here in the store are actually silk screened here locally. And uh, we're just going to take it over ourselves. Why not? So email. Joe will email you back. We'll send you out a t-shirt. And... Uh, we're going to do it the old school way because that's how we do things around here. Let's go check out this missile command. All right, folks. So Joe has got this thing working pretty good. And uh, I hit it with the decals ring. Got that a little better. We moved it. And then I adjusted the monitor and I hit it with the rejuvenator and it got a little better but you know I gotta be honest with these this is a 4600 as you saw um, you kind of you're fighting a losing battle with these some of these tubes you know it's just they're not in great shape so um, you can kind of tell by looking at them once you've seen it a bunch of times you see the tube and then you go eh, eh. 
Ew. That one's not going to brighten up too much. So I hit it with the Juvie. <laughs> the Rejuvie. And it made it a little better, but you know. We're, this is not a new old stock tube, so it's 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 worn, but it looks all right. You can kind of tell when the focus won't when when you're having focus problems, and it's the tube. You know, a lot of times it's not going to get too much better. That tube's on the way out, but it's it'll probably stay like this. You know, if you just play it, you know, in home environment or whatever, it'll probably stay like this for 15, 20 more years. Um, and it, if you put an LCD in it, it would look like crap. This is really the only way to go. Now, I am not good at this game. I'm going to play it a little bit. But this is, and just, for, for you youngins, for the younger viewers that weren't playing these games back in the early 80s, let me explain Missile Command to you. This is one of the hardest damn games of all time. You're about to see why. It's just crazy hard. This one and Defender are fighting each other for what's the hardest insanely satanically hard game that they ever made so let's read the instructions for all the children's out there instructions press one or two players start now on mine it's on free play so it's that is very easily done position the reticule it doesn't say that position the crosshairs with the trackball fire from the closest base with the fire button. So there are three fire buttons. One for each base. Defend the cities. Play until all the cities are gone. So the cities are the arrows here. There are only ten missiles per base. Earn, earn bonus cities for extended play. So basically the missiles are moving. And the planes are moving. And the UFOs are moving. The UFOs can shoot at you. And you kind of need to track everything. You need to get ahead of it. So whenever you shoot, you've got to be in front of it. If you get right on top of the little dot or whatever, the end of the missile, it'll go past it and you won't hit it. I don't know. If you were right on top of it, it'd probably be all right. But And now, when I've seen the pro players play, the way they do it is they just kind of make an arc of shots across the top of the screen and it hits basically everything. So it may be that part of the strategy is you get good enough to where you can place a a screen like a you know a shot here and here and here and here and here and if they're timed just right they'll all bloom up and blow up and make a wall that kills every single missile. So it could be that's part of the strategy. I don't know. I'm not good enough to do that. This one though is playing pretty good. So I think if someone was a pretty good player, they could probably rock this one's world. All right, so we're going to attempt it. Like I said, I'm not any good at it. But you can see how frustratingly hard it was. I have beat the first board. That's about as good as we're going to get, people. And if you let them get too slow, too low, they split. I, I lost the, I lost my left, uh, my left battery here. I lost the city. They're messing me up, folks. Oh, you get 10 missiles every time, so I guess part of it is just use all your missiles. 
<laughs> I need an extra city. I need to get some cities back. Who the did you? I'm out of shots. If he would have hit the city, I would have been done. We're in trouble. So I guess the strategy could be to actually protect the cities like it said. Oh, I got a bonus city. Sweet. Little sucker was cheating. You see him doing this? You can't do that. Look, I got a great score. Boy, I'm great. All right, so if you uh, if you don't know about the the chase for the high score, I'll just tell you like the basics of it as I understand it. To get the high score on this game, you have to play it for like fifty hours or something like that. It's like a marathon type game, you know. There's also an issue where you you saw how I got a bonus city. Well, if you know what you're doing, you can get a lot of bonus cities. I don't know what I'm doing, so I got one bonus city. But if you know what you're doing, you can get a bunch of bonus cities. However, there is a bug in the game. 256 is the magic number, right? So if you if you um, um, I don't I don't know the specifics of it, but in programming, some numbers are um, significant. So like 256 is one of them. So you may have heard of like a 256. Well. The younger people probably haven't, but like a 256 megabyte, you know, you might have saw like a memory card that size back in the day, or uh, I don't know if they had a 256 gig, if they ever had anything like that. I guess it wouldn't be gig. 256 kilobytes, 256 megabytes, blah, 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 blah. For whatever reason, that number is a, is a significant number. So it's, you know, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. So some, in a lot of the games, uh, when they program the game, some of the variables in the game revolve around that number. And that becomes a problem in some of the games because of the way they're coded. I am not a software guy, so people down below can correct me that, are, that know more about software than me. But sometimes you run into a problem because of that number. So, for instance, on Pac-Man, the 256th level of Pac-Man... Uh, because they're using that number or whatever for some reason to make some kind of random whatever in the code, when you get to the 256th board of Pac-Man, it's broken. It's not right. When you get to the 256th level of Donkey Kong, uh, it causes a problem where the... I think it's the 256th level. Uh, it causes a problem where the timer, you don't have enough time to get to the top of the screen. It's a broken board. And it just has to do with, that's like a magic number, basically, because of just the way that it was coded. They could have probably fixed that. I'm sure it can be repaired now, but they could have fixed that back in the day, but they didn't really think anybody would ever get to that level, so they never even thought of it, right? It never crossed anybody's mind. In this game, as I understand it, 256 is the number of cities you get, and if you get that, the game resets. So you can get bonus cities. So if you're really good, you keep your six and you win, like at the end of the board, you might win another one. Um, so as I understand it, it's not the 256th level. It's if you have 256 cities that the game has problems. And it's it happens whenever um, there are certain levels where you win a random number of cities. <laughs> so if you've got 210 cities, you might win 50 cities which puts you over the 256, which screws up the program and it, everything resets. So to beat this damn thing, you kind of need someone to help you beat it by keeping track of how many extra cities you've got. So if I've got six and then I get another one, well, I can remember I've got seven, but if I've done this over and over again, look at the, the focus. This is not the tube, this is the camera. <laughs> um, 
It's because the, the screen's so bright, or looks so bright because of the we've got the lights off. Um, if you get over 256, it causes you problems. Well, you may not know, you know, how many cities you've got. So the guys and girls that are the top players, they keep track of how many extra cities they've got to make sure that they don't get over 256, even if that means walking away from the machine. So I suppose the way it works, although how the hell would I know, if you lose all six of your cities, but you have some in reserve, which I guess I basically just did a second ago, I had one in reserve, and you have some in reserve, uh, you can play again, and you'll have six more cities up. So that's basically how, you know, the 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 chase for the high score uh, is done. And uh, everybody's favorite, Billy Mitchell, the Donkey Kong guy that half the people hate. He's also very good at Missile Command. Don't tell anybody. I'm sure he's cheating, though. Well, I, by the way, I'm just joking. I'm not accusing Billy of cheating. I don't have any problems with Billy. It's a joke. I'm, I'm sarcastically saying that. I'm just saying I don't see how the hell you would cheat at this game. It's really hard. This is, this is one of the prestigious... Um, uh, records. You know what I mean? This is one of the... Of course, Donkey Kong's won. Um, this is one of the games that people want to be the best in the world at and then brag about. <laughs> I am not bragging. I can barely get to level three. I just don't even really understand the, the concepts behind being good at the game. I lost the city, people. I think part of it is probably getting good at dividing the screen into thirds. But I don't know if that even helps. I don't know if it's better to shoot a missile over here. Oh, you know what? I think I figured out once before. I need to test that. That if you shoot a missile and then shoot it again, it cancels the missile, which is not good. Let's try that. I'm going to just shoot from the right. See if it cancels it. No. Did it? No, it shot them all. Okay. That's not true. I didn't quite get them. quite get to it in time. I did get a bonus city though. So now I've got like three, two. Oh boy. I'm out people. I shot too many. Did it do the end thing? Or is there a dip switch to turn that off, maybe? Or does that only do it whenever it's not on free play? So basically there's a thing where it says the end and that makes this big screen and everything's uh, bright. Another interesting thing about this game is that it almost looks like a vector game. It's very similar to some of the vector games because of the bright blue, yellow, red... Um, they can't do filled-in graphics on a vector game, though. But the brightness of it and the lines of it, it kind of reminds you of a vector game. They can't do this yellow shading, though. Um, they can't really do the red, either, although they may be able to draw that over and over again to do it or something. But All right, we're going to play one more time. Um, it looks like my high score is 12,455. I am in no danger... Of beating the 50 hour marathon. So 
I wasn't close enough to that one. You got to get a little. Later, they go faster, so you got to be farther ahead of them. And I haven't even got the, the fast part yet. I mean. That was dumb. I shouldn't have shot two right next to each other. Let's see if I can beat my score. that one but it didn't matter because we're at the end of the board that just destroyed all my bonus points that was fairly efficient here comes the pain the blue level the city that time. <laughs> I shot too much. I'm gonna get out with two of them, I think. Okay. Maybe an extra. Okay, so now I got three. That's that, folks. That's that. I did beat it just barely. Very cool game. This one, you know, if it had side art, that would go a lot farther. And you can see with the lights off, it the monitor looks fine it's just the focus isn't great and it's a little little worn out wells garner 4600 original atari power supply original atari board there you go that's missile command hope you enjoyed it leave your comments below i especially would like to know the 256 thing someone explain the 256 thing in more detail than i can that's always kind of fascinated me. And how many games are crippled by the 256 thing? I'm pretty sure Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, and Missile Command, all three are crippled by the number 256. Tell me if I'm wrong. I believe I am correct. And I don't want to hear no crap about the Pac-Man is actually bored 255. I don't want you to look, people. 255 is also damn close. Awful damn close to 256. You can't tell me. That the Pac-Man board being crippled at 255 doesn't have anything to do with the number 256. I just don't believe that. It, it has to. It must be that uh, there's got to be a reason. <laughs> so uh, thanks to everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. What a classic. What a classic. Now, if you'd like to see all of the arcade games, pinball machines, and jukeboxes that we have for sale at the moment, go to our website. Go to lionsarcade.com. Uh, you can see prices, pictures, and descriptions of every single one of them. And, hey, if you would like a t-shirt, we are selling t-shirts now. They're $25 plus shipping. No, wait. Yeah. I think they're $25 plus $5 shipping. Something like that. I don't know. Get a hold of us. We've got some silkscreen t-shirts that we're selling. You're going to love them. You're going to absolutely love them. You're going to be one of the first people to be able to wear them. And I'm talking that we're going to ship them to you coming straight from us right right out the door here the mailman will come by and take it with him wait till you see the pitch i'm going to do on this you're going to think it's the greatest thing ever i've got i'm, I'm getting into full-on uh home shopping network mode we're going to do the greatest infomercial of all time once we get these these t-shirts in our grubby little hands 
So <laughs> if you're interested in something like that, email us. And if you know how you can support our channel, there is a link down below all of our videos to Amazon. And it's like a, a pinball or something. You can go check out that pinball and buy one if you want. But after you've went to Amazon using our link, Amazon records, hey, that we sent you there. Because, you know, we're, we're pushing you to Amazon right now. So if you've got anything that you're going to buy on Amazon, click our link before you do. And it gives our channel, gives us a little support. They give us a little tip for sending you there. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. But we'll see you back here uh, in a couple days. Make sure to check out my brother Donnie, his channel. Link's down below. I'm over there with him. But uh, we'll, see, we'll see you on the next video. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Atari's unbelievably classic Missile Command in all of its glory.